and my father was very good at induction, inductions and eulogies. And if he were here today, he'd talk about a young kid from Las Vegas, Nevada, who went to Gorman High School, became a football star here in his hometown, was part of a national recruiting process for colleges throughout the nation, and he chose Nebraska, where he went on to perform for three years and set records. And after his career there, was drafted by the Oakland Raiders to become quarterback for the Oakland Raiders. During David's career as an Oakland Raider and Los Angeles Raider, he won two championships, two Super Bowl rings, and when his career was over, he became a broadcaster for the Raider organization. At this time, if my dad was speaking, you guys would be all goosebumped, up cheering, thinking that David was going into the Hall of Fame right now. But that's not the case, but he is joining a special team up there, and I'm sure they've got some plans for everybody. And the thing that Hummer taught me is, hey, just don't whine about it, get out and go to work. You know, what do you gotta do? You gotta sell tickets, you gotta sell sponsorships, you gotta get people come to the game, you gotta get your players involved in the community, a lot of the things he had learned through his career, and it's what we did. So, I, you know, I think that a lot of the success, I mean, we're the only professional franchise that's ever succeeded here, and a lot of that has to do with what David was able to teach me and our staff was able to get out and really try to make a difference in this community because it was, this community did mean a lot to David. It, uh, he, he was a foundational Vegas guy and, and will never be forgotten. He was confined to that wheelchair but never confined by it. He loved football. We all talked about the Raiders, the Huskers, the Gales. He loved his teammates. He loved Las Vegas and his friends. But there was no love like he had for his daughter Courtney. Everybody's mentioned it, and that was absolutely the truth. She didn't ask to be his caregiver, but she accepted it with grace, and it amazed all of us. I'll give you a couple of examples. David spent 87 days in the hospital before he passed. I got to talk to him probably every other day. I'd go by and see him. We'd sit and we'd watch games, and then when the football, when Super Bowl ended, he went into deep depression. There was no more football. So Courtney brought her laptop, and she hooked it up to the TV, and she played old Raiders games. I mean, I don't know where you found some of these games. Um, and most of these games, David was just holding extra points and field goals, right? But he loved it. He sat there and watched those games all day long. My dad just loved every second of his life and wanted to share that joy and passion and just he wanted to bring out the best in everyone. And I know that definitely his most most said thing is that you can do uh, you're fine <laughs> Courtney just, they're all our friends you're good I know it doesn't mean that I can still talk <laughs> <laughs> just do the best you can and all that's that's all that's yes. what he said to you right yes. what, what did he say I'm trying to do the best that I can you just are stop talking <laughs> <laughs> um, my dad I have never met someone who has loved anybody as much as my dad loves every single one of his friends and he does not want he said it over and over and over again as he much did <laughs> that he doesn't want anyone to be sad when he passes that he only wants people to celebrate his life 